this episode of Cursed. There is no curse without demons. She yelled, and I ran up the stairs. I was on the stairs. There was a presence that pushed me. My name is David Marsh, and over the last 30 years, I've seen people affected by curses in very real, yet unbelievable ways. Those afflicted by a curse quickly become sick with fear and misery as they fall deeper and deeper into a dark and tormented existence and eventually it can lead them to their untimely death. This is Cursed. family is one that is tormented throughout the years and throughout the generations. For some families, their curse is new. They can trace its origin and watch as every member of their family is affected. For some, the curse goes back so far that there's no way to know the truth behind its origins. And the only validation of its existence comes from the destruction it has caused over the years. For others, the root of the curse is as much a mystery as the frightening activity that takes place within the family. Whichever the scenario, the purpose of these curses is the same, to kill off the family. Planted somewhere, deep within their bloodline, something so terrible is happening and it only wants one thing, to destroy that family. The Bell Witch is a story that has been around for almost 200 years. The origins of the witch are unclear, but for one man, his family's history and lineage has shed some light on the possible root of this infamous legend. And while the story he's been told may enlighten his family, it has done nothing to stop her curse from tormenting and even killing the men in his family. I'm John. I'm from Biloxi, Mississippi. And my family's cursed. The story I was told since I was a child, there was a witch in our family. And it seems that I'm a direct descendant of this witch and John Bell. John Bell in the 1820s, he did a bad thing. He's a rich planner, uh, does everything, has, has an established family. Then all of a sudden, everything goes to hell. He had a mistress, Katie the Bell Witch. A very powerful, very all-knowing witch. He betrayed his mistress. And that's where the bloodline began. Your 
He killed her. He murdered his mistress. She disappeared. That's it. That set this curse in motion. The Bell Witch throwing a curse on them at the last moments of her life, she really wanted to make an impact that, you know, she was important. And I think that that's the whole reason the curse exists. She doesn't want to give up. She doesn't want to be forgotten. And she's made herself known decade after decade and century after century, tapping on your shoulder, pulling your hair, smacking in the head, pulled limb from limb, dragged all over the house. There's a constant presence. It's led to murders and suicides and insanity. Katie was a living person whose life was tragically ended over an adulterous affair. And in death, she turned into a terrifying witch who became hell-bent on destroying the life of John Bell. She did everything she possibly could to make his life a living hell. Things going in the house they can't explain. Different sides think that it's, it's just a possession, the devil's there. There is no curse without demons. If someone is under a curse, that person is simply under a heavy, heavy demonic attack. killed John Bell. And then it went on from there. The curse only affects the males in the family. Katie, the Bell Witch, looks at them as the child she lost at first. Very benign, very loving, looking over everything and as they grow older, they become John Bell. They start looking more like John Bell. And that carries over. And eventually she becomes vengeful. And she's been a vengeful spirit for many, many years. There was a grand uncle that was tormented continuously by Katie over and over and over again. Coming up, I was the target of the Bell Witch. And later, she yelled and I ran up the stairs This act of violence can leave behind such a negative energy that it can be felt for generations to come. The Bell Witch wanted this family to suffer so badly that their curse has continued on for years.
There was a grand uncle that was tormented continuously by Katie. She would come back over and over and over again, which drove him to a cabin in Kentucky. just somebody on your shoulder every day, every waking moment of your life. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you think, when you eat, never leaves you alone. That's what we've had to deal with in the family. I was the target of Katie. The entity came to see me as a child. My grandmother intervened and she said, not this one. There are stones and rituals that you can actually have to skip that generational curse or deter it. I'm very lucky that this is not affecting me. And I hope it doesn't affect my children or their children's children. I'm very grateful. It kind of dodged the bullet. But it has touched people in my current generation in a very negative way. It'd make you go insane. They kill themselves. If you had this on your head the whole time, what would it lead you to do? The curse of the Bell Witch is as active today as it was almost 200 years ago. John and his family are still targets, with Katie having already caused numerous suicides, tragic deaths, and even severe psychological damage to the men in his family. He fears for his own safety and for that of his only son. Knowing the possible origin may help this family endure the effects of their curse. But for how long? For some, finding out about their family's curse is an event that they'd rather not experience. Worse than finding out that you're on that curse's hit list is the knowledge that the origins of the curse and how it came to be died a long time ago with those who may have brought it on. My name is Brandon. I am from Sacramento, California and my family is cursed. My family curse started generations before I was born. I'm not exactly sure of the year it started. Generational curses can be reborn to a new body. The curse or the spiritual connection still will linger and will still continue. Over 10 people in my family that I know of have died because of this family curse. I have a fear that I can be the next one to die. This is that tall. That's a lot tall. There's a curse on this family. It looks like One of the first times that I got a clue that my family was actually cursed was when I heard my mother talking about this family curse. I'm done talking about it. 
she really didn't want my uncle to speak about it in front of her. None of our elders that were in the family really spoke about this curse. Curses are real. During this conversation, I heard that this curse has been happening to our family for years and years. People die every day. This is not a coincidence. Everybody died in the same pattern. I heard that it started with my great grandmother. She had eight kids, but six of them died before their time. It just seemed like a domino effect. Every year, it was one of her children dying. And they believe that this is a connection between her backing into her son. After her son dying from that, the rest of her kids slowly started dying. Now she only has two kids living. They said that my great-grandmother was getting ready to leave her house and her son was in the driveway playing with other little kids. And when she had gotten to the car, she didn't realize that there was anyone behind her. She backed in and she hit her son. During this conversation, I heard that this curse has a relation to my brother's death. My oldest brother was hit and killed by a drunk driver. They said that this curse has a relation to his death and my great-grandmother's son's death. The boys from each generation dying from a moving vehicle. Every single day, people die as results of curses. But it can be cancer, it can be automobile accidents, it can be anything. This curse affects my family two different ways the boys dying by cars, and relatives dying in the bathroom as well. They said that this curse happened to my grandmother inside of her house. Her car was still in the driveway. Her neighbors continued to call her every week, you know, to go to church and to attend community events, but she would never answer the phone. And so, I actually went into my grandmother's house and searched around to look for her. I went upstairs. Found her dead in the bathroom. I'm not gonna acknowledge this. That's it. I'm through. That's it. next day. After their conversation, something happened to my uncle. Coming up. The next thing I know, the ambulance was rushing through the doors. I just continued to think, who is going to die next in my family? And later. i never been that scared. I don't know what it is. It's very scary. For some families, the reality of their curse is so terrifying that they try to ignore it and bury it in the past. But discovering that the curse is real and acknowledging it is enough to open the door and allow the curse back into their lives. The opposite of fear is faith. and the opposite of a blessing is a curse. I'm not gonna acknowledge this. That's it. 
I'm through. That's it. The next day, after their conversation, my uncle got hit by a car. And then he had gotten into an argument with the driver. The guy stabbed him in the neck. He ended up going to the bathroom with his hand on his neck. And he ended up dying in the bathroom as well. So this kind of makes a connection as far as deaths happening in the bathroom. After I heard about this curse, it's never been the same for me again. Instead of really living life day to day, I question if I'm going to make it another day. A curse can continue on in a generation of families and cause a great deal of fear and dying before their time. Two years ago, my mother was in the same bathroom. She yelled and I ran up the stairs. Something was going on where she was not able to get up and get out of the bathroom. She made some comments that were referring to the family curse. She has said, I need to get out of the bathroom fast because I don't want to die in the bathroom like my mother and my brother did. I cannot continue this curse. She was saying that she didn't want this curse to affect her. When my mom kept repeating that she didn't want to die in the bathroom like my grandmother and my brother, it instantly made me think about the curse. Lives are being ended. This really made me think about my life. What would I do with my life without my mother? So it really gets me worried about my life, my siblings' lives, as well as hers. I just don't want her to be the next person dying. The next thing I know, the ambulance was rushing through the doors. So my mother didn't end up dying in the bathroom. After my grandmother's death, my mother actually found a huge box of letters that were being sent between different family members. She gave them to me to throw away. Before throwing them away, I picked up one of the letters that were in the box from my grandmother's house and read it. And after reading it, I decided that I wanted to keep the letters, but not tell her that I didn't throw them away. I started reading the letters and doing some investigation. None of the letters mention any names about how the family curse has started. However, because it was between one of the older relatives in my family, we believe that it was between her generation and my great-grandmother's generation. There's no curse without an open door. As we cluster in with same family members, a curse can make more of an impact and would continue perpetrating the curse, basically. I've gotten startled plenty of times in my life because of this curse. Coming up. This curse has caused me to be very terrified. Because of this curse, I always think I can die any moment. 
And later... We noticed that it was a presence that was there in the house. I felt cold chills. It was something that I wasn't expecting. I've gotten startled plenty of times in my life because of this curse. I've actually almost been hit by a car crossing the street. I have a fear because of this curse that I can be the next one to be hit by a car. So because of this fear, it kind of puts me in a position to where I don't even want to be near a car or even near a street. This curse has caused me to be very terrified. Because of this curse, I always think to myself that I can die any moment. I can be walking across the street and be hit by a car even though I have the right of way. I can die in a bathroom out of nowhere because of this family curse. Everything in my life, I feel that I have to connect it to the family curse. It kind of made me reflect back on the deaths in the past and how my other family members have died just by cars. It makes me think about how it's so many laws out there, it's so many rules to abide by, but that in the end, they really don't matter because death is still there. The knowledge that forever you will be bound by your curse is a terrifying burden to carry. But knowing that those closest to you are also at risk of premature death is even worse. Sometimes, a family tries to hide the truth in hopes of protecting the next generation. But even the best of intentions fall short of expectation. And in the end, there may be little one can do but let the curse run its course. Curses can come in many different forms, and there are countless effects. But for a family that is new to their curse, the sheer terror that they feel in their own home is enough to send them into a tailspin. And knowing its cause is little if no comfort at all to a family in trouble. My name is Tiffany. And my family is cursed. I'm mixing with the cash that's coming. Because it's not invoiced yet. We're gonna have a business. This gotta get done. This all started several years ago. What's going on? Reese is talking about that I'm stealing it, and I'm not. My dad had gotten into conflict with my uncle as well as my uncle's wife. This doesn't involve you! Hey. My uncle's wife was actually into black magic, voodoo, a lot of the family members who got into an argument with her or any type of conflict, something negative would happen to them. So several of them called my dad, like, you better be careful. You better not make her mad or upset because that stuff that she's into, it really does do damage to people. My dad went to talk to my uncle and my uncle's wife was having a conversation with my mom. She was rubbing on her in a weird way, like a type of a pattern. After that, it looked like all hell broke loose. <laughs> my 
My mom later found out that some people that are highly into black magic or witchcraft and voodoo and stuff like that, they do patterns and drawing type of symbols on you. When they plan on doing some type of a curse or a spell on you, My uncle agreed to come out to the house to talk things over, to kind of try to settle it down. My uncle's wife, she was wandering around other places of the house. My family eventually figured out that there were items that were missing that didn't make any sense to be missing at all. Things that were just small, that belonged to each one of us. Every single one of us had an item missing. Other family members were like, she must be up to try to do some type of spell or some type of black magic on you. Buddha practitioners, they will do a Buddha spell with something that belongs to you. We definitely know that she did put a curse on us. Shortly after my uncle's wife had took things out of the house, that is when we started noticing strange things started happening. My dad luck went completely from being good to bad. Losing money, having all this stuff going, just kind of went bad. We noticed that it was a presence that was there in the house. It was like some type of energy that everyone was experienced that lived in the house. You felt the tension if you were in certain spots of the house. You felt like some type of negative tension there. Dark energy leaves a mark. A curse is similar to that. You are marked by this dark energy, and people can see it. We all felt negative tension. We felt a presence. Some presence would be cold and freezing at certain parts of the house. We had a chime on our alarm system, and it lets us know when a door has been opened. This thing would constantly go off There would be vibrations. We're just like, there's nothing there. Why is it making that humming or buzzing noise? The door would basically move, shake. We had objects that were being moved. It would be on the shelves and that were just thrown falling off for no reason, nothing there at all. One day, my brother saw something that spooked him out. He saw something on the stairs. He said that the former image of what he saw was like a man. He said something looked evil in a black form that just reminded him of an undertaker. I've seen it 
twice. I don't know what it is, but it, it seemed to be a person. I felt cold, like cold chills, because it was something that I wasn't expecting. You know, it took me by surprise. One day, I was on the stairs, and then a curse can be sent just through the atmosphere like a radio wave. A person who is in tune with this vibration, we'll pick it up. I was on the stairs. There was a presence that pushed me and I stumbled and I fell down. I never been that scared. Once someone is under curse and realizes that he or she is under curse, then they need to do something about it. Otherwise, the curse is going to carry on their, their purpose. I actually contacted psychics. Well, what am I supposed to do? I saw different mediums and different psychics that pretty much all came up with the same thing. How do I do that? Someone in your family that did something wrong to you guys. They wish you guys harm, but the advice that they would give us was go get some holy water from church. I put some salt down. So I just picked some salt around the doorways. Didn't solve my issue like I thought it would. I sprinkled the holy water on that areas where it would like to trigger most. And basically that got rid of my problem temporarily. I definitely thought that this energy was gone. I was so happy after I put the holy water down. And then I noticed that that presence was back. The whole power system seemed like the lights would be going off. The basement door would open, shut on its own, just kind of back and forth. One time, I was walking in the bedroom. Next thing I know, the blinds do move in a way that they're not supposed to move. We have these wood cabinets. Sometimes they shake and move. I'm desperate for anything that will work. So far, everything's been just temporary. And that's the part that freaks me out. I do worry that this curse is never gonna go away. And that one day, this curse is gonna try to do something to hurt me. I think this woman put a curse on my family. That's why we see all of these things. I don't know what it is. It's very scary. 
I've always felt hopeless about it and helpless about breaking this curse because it was done by someone that knew what they were doing. I worry about my family being in the house, and I worry about the curse. I never thought I would be a victim of a curse. This curse has made us fearful because we know that it's here and that there's nothing that we can do about it. We don't know how to get rid of it. For Tiffany and her family, their curse remains and stays with them to this day. While they have tried to remove it and even evade it, there has been no relief. For them, the knowledge of how it started has provided little more than a solidification of this curse's existence. Unraveling the mystery of a family curse is little consolation to those that have endured murder, suicide, agony and torment at the hands of someone else. But what is it that allows generations to be so affected for so many years? Is it the always present demon or witch hell bent on ending a bloodline? Is it the ongoing effort of one person who is continually fueling the curse and its effects? Or is it something much larger than that? Something that can't be easily understood. Something that is so dark and mysterious that it cannot be fought. Whatever the situation, just knowing that you are the one who is going to continue the curse on to the rest of your bloodline could be worse than knowing that you will die from it. Some curses will resolve themselves. Some will kill their victims before they can pass along the secrets, and others will live on forever, terrorizing its host as long as the bloodline and the curse continue.